having defined elemental movements and classifying elemental movement into different categories in this last part of the class let us discuss some of the common nature or characteristics of elemental movement again let's try to conceptualize elemental movement with certain common characteristics of common nature one of the fundamental factor about elemental movements are that the ambiguous and deep connection with science and technology science and technology play a crucial role in contemporary environmental movements so therefore manuel castell says that development of green ideas is a revolt of science against the science let us try to understand this concept how these environmental movements pit science against the science how they position science against the science while on the one hand there is a growing distrust against science and technology because now it has been realized that most of the environmental problems are because of the of, of the science and technological advancement it is because of the technological advancement because of the industrialization that we see these environmental movement so in that sense science and technology or the growing industrial technology becomes the common adversary of almost all categories of the movements in the sense as we have discussed that that environmentalism is a departure from industrialism so therefore industrial technology or science and technology modern science and modern technology becomes the fundamental adversary the fundamental enemy for these environmental movements but at the same time these environmental movements also rely to a great extent upon science upon scientific data to put forth their claim so therefore environmental movements like like movement against global warming movement against uh, or movement for uh, movement uh, for for climatic change these kind of global environmental movements essentially depend upon scientific data about global warming scientific data about about pollution scientific data about about, about climate change to put forth their claim in that sense science and technology play a crucial role play a, 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 a they play an ambiguous role in these kind of environmental movements while on the one hand science is the adversary on the one hand science is the enemy on the other hand these movements rely on science and scientific data secondly what manuel castell again writes that these environmental movements in the contemporary times are emerging as science based movements manuel castell writes while criticizing the domination of life by the science these environmental movements use science to oppose science on behalf of life what we mean by this sentence castell says that environmental movement essentially pit science against the science because these new technologies this scientific advancement has resulted in domination of humanity have, have controlled the humanity and environmental movements try to free humanity from the control of the science and for that it also uses a scientific knowledge and in that sense environmental movements aim at control of scientific rationality by social rationality so in that sense he talk about emergence of a popular science so environmental movements talk about emergence of a new breed of scientists who use scientific knowledge for for benefit of the people rather than using scientific knowledge for or rather than using scientific or technological knowledge for industrialization for for, for development these these environmentalists talk about popularizing scientific knowledge in that sense popular science talks about people's science it talks about using scientific knowledge scientific method and scientific information and data to support people's claim for a better life in that sense science as i told science plays an important role while science is the enemy while science and technology is the enemy against which these environmental movements struggle at the same time these movements use greater scientific information greater scientific knowledge to put forth their claim the third characteristics of environmental movements in the contemporary times is that they call for a historical redefinition of time and space they emphasize on locality and control of local space by the people if you see the second category of environmental movements that we discussed that is the defense of local space these environmental movements or the growing environmental movements essentially talk about local autonomy they talk about control over local resources they talk about control over local space so therefore these movements have redefined the notion of space and time these movements redefined how space should be used whether the central state has a power over the local space or the local community has power over the local space that is the central question in many of these environmental movements because as we have discussed that most part of environmental movements are essentially local based movements or they are essentially there is a physicality involved in this movement so in that sense these movements 
call for greater control over local space by the local people. It is not the central state who should decide over the local space, who should decide over the locality. It should be the local community who should who should decide over the over the affairs of the local space. In that sense, environmental movements redefine the notion of space, redefine the notion of autonomy over the local space. The fourth characteristics of environmental movements is that it talk about grassroots democracy as a new form of political configuration. So environmental movements call for local level decision making by the community. So the locality or the physicality is foregrounded in many of the environmental movements. As we have discussed, environmental movements concerning local pollution, environmental movements concerning, concerning certain local environmental degradation which had a severe impact on local people where local people become or where they confront these environmental problems, where they physically observe these environmental problems. They essentially talk about greater decision making over these issues. So therefore, when we see environmental movements, I mean, when we see environmental movements in the Indian context, let's say this is not the movements for uh, against mining, the movements against dam construction, the movements against deforestation. Essentially, these movements call for greater power. These movements call for greater responsibility to local communities in decision making. In that sense, environmental movements talk about new political configuration where locality, local decision making plays an important role. Finally, the last characteristics of environmental movements that we may identify is that these movements have resulted in construction of a new form of identity. They essentially call for a form of identity which is based on ecocentric or which is socio-biological in nature. What we mean by the socio-biological identity? These environmental movements have called for an ideology, called for a culture where human society or where humans are considered or human species are considered one element of ecosystem who share the planet earth along with several other living and non-living species. So therefore the central idea, the central identity that these environmental movements put forth is to construct is, is the construction of a new kind of identity where human beings should not be considered as superior species where human beings share the planet earth so essentially what is highlighted in this environmental movement is sharing the planet earth that planet earth or the ecosystem is a is a system where human beings are just one element human beings should not control the ecosystem human beings should not should not should not establish dominance over ecosystem essentially what it talks about ideologically what it talks about is an ecocentric egalitarianism where different elements of ecosystem will have equal rights over the ecosystem humans should not have, should not claim a superior right over the ecosystem so in that sense perhaps the greatest contribution of these environmental movements is production of an identity or an identity construction which considers on ecocentric egalitarianism which produces an socio-biological identity where human beings are part of the larger ecosystem. We have the same right over the ecosystem as that of other plants, animals and other elements. So therefore human beings are not superior so therefore they cannot claim a greater share over the resource. They have to share the planet earth, they have to share the ecosystem. To conclude this class and environmental uh, movements, we may say that what defines environmental movements, what, what is the central focus of environmental movement is the shared concern for nature. So therefore environmental movements are difficult to, to be conceptualized with a conventional social movement framework because environmental movements, let me, let, let me focus, let me, let me emphasize, environmental movements are not necessarily anti-systemic, they are not necessarily anti-institutional, they are diverse and heterogeneous, they are formal as well as informal. They may be organized as well as unorganized. They may be anti-institutional as well as institutional. They may be, they may functions through different kinds of networks. They may, they may functions outside the system and inside the system. So to conclude, we may say that what is, what is the defining characteristics of contemporary environmental movements are networks that function at different levels. They function at the global, at the regional and at the local level. So what is, what is essentially emerging out of this environmental movement is the global local linkages. These environmental movements essentially talk about a linkage between locality, physicality with that of global issues. 
while environmental issues while environmental ideas that this movement portray are essentially global ideas are ideas concerning the the, the the entire planet earth but sometimes we find that these movements takes place in a particular locality so therefore while locality becomes important while locality or materiality becomes important perhaps what becomes central in these kind of environmental movements is the global ideas so therefore to conclude we may say that a movement may emerge in a particular locality may a movement may emerge in the context or in in, in, the, in the context of forest it may emerge in the context of water it may, it may emerge in the context of of, of uh, minerals but what is important about these kind of environmental movements is the message that they put through is the identity that they construct and as i just discussed these movements essentially construct an identity which believes in sharing the planet earth so therefore perhaps we need to understand we need to realize that we are traveling in a common boat we are traveling in the same boat and therefore either we will sail together or we sink together so what is required therefore for environmental protection what is required therefore what is the ultimate goal of this environmental movement therefore is a global level cooperation so therefore when we see contemporary environmental movements when we see movement concerning climate change perhaps that signifies this conceptualization of environmental movements that i just discussed movements for climatic change doesn't require activities by individuals doesn't uh, or it is not enough if individuals show their concern is for nature it is not enough if countries show their concern is for nature what is essentially the the call of the hour what is essentially required is global level cooperation and essentially therefore these environmental movements call for a global cooperation to develop a ethical to develop an ethical attitude towards nature to develop a moral attitude towards nature in that sense let, let us therefore conclude that environmental movements are emerging as essentially global movements are essentially global concern for nature and which construct a kind of identity which talks of humanity which talks of human species as one among several species in this planet earth so therefore what is important about environmental movement what is central about environmental movement is sharing the planet earth and taking responsibility of this planet earth thank you